Hello, I'm David and I'm the product manager of the SMEMA Hermes adapter. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set up a data input device, that being a barcode reader. It's been quite common for customers to use the Hermes adapter as a way of injecting data at the start of the production line. And so a barcode reader is still required if this uh, Hermes data is injected into the line. So, first of all, I want to highlight that I'm using these version numbers, uh, Multiplug 2281, I'm using Hermes uh, extension 1015, and the serial port extension 103. I'm also using MPLib 109. So that's just in case you're either on using an old version of the software or um, if you're watching in the future and some of the user um, user interfaces have been changed around, the, the spirit of the tutorial probably will still make sense. If it has been updated, uh, check the show notes below and um, always check the wiki of the appropriate extension you're uh, using. If you're using the adapter, that also has a support page, so check that too. But the, the spirit of having, having, how, having how to set up the uh, adapter is will be still true. So there's two methods of attaching devices onto the adapter. There's the serial port that is uh, above the USB ports, which is the second uh, way of attaching it to the adapter. Um, you can also use a USB to serial adapter if you require more serial ports than just one or you have um, other equipment that requires serial ports. The first thing you need to do is have fun with your barcode scanner and make sure it's set up in the correct way. Now this is always different depending on the manufacturers. Essentially what you need to get to is a situation where your, your uh, barcode scanner, if it is a USB one that is, is a COM port emulated um, one and all the manufacturing um, all, all the manuals will be different and all the terminologies m might be different also um, I'm currently going to use a, uh, a Zebra handheld barcode reader um, and I believe it didn't have this, this terminology um, but uh, essentially what you need to get to is a point where if you connect your barcode reader, your USB barcode reader into a Windows um, device, and if you go to the, the device manager, you will see it listed under the COM and LPT list. The second setup process of your barcode scanner is making sure that there's termination characters and ideally start characters. These are control characters. These are not seen by humans, but they're seen as a way of saying that is the end of the string, that is the end of the characters, that is the end of the barcode reader, uh, barcodes. Um, so it's good practice to have a termination string. If it doesn't, there is possibilities of just using timings, but it's not always um, accurate. So we encourage you to set up a termination string. Quite common, this can be a carriage return or an end of line or end of transmission. Um, finally, a quick overview of multi-plug. So that the adapter runs multi-plug, extensions run on top of multi-plug, and today, as I've already uh, highlighted, we're gonna use a Hermes extension and the serial port extension. The concept is pretty simple. One extension causes an event, it creates data, and then it and then another uh, extension subscribes to that data and then takes that data on. Events have subjects, which are the individual elements of the data set. It could just be one, it could be many. With a, um, with a, US, with a, um, with a barcode reader, uh, there probably would just be one uh, value, one subject. So if you see here, we've got the serial port extension, it creates an event, has subjects, subject in this case will be just value and then the Hermes extension subscribes to it. So 
let's go over to the adapter. Oh, one last thing. I highlighted that we're using MPLib. And in MPLib 109, the option w was created to be allowed to select multiple subjects. And that's handy in situations where you want multiple bits of data and then that's in with the intention to put it into the Hermes data set. Again, with a barcode reader, you've only got one value, which is the barcode. So let's go over to the adapters uh, user interface. First of all, let's go over to the serial port extension. Out of the box, you'll have a serial port connected to AMAO. And that is the actual serial port found on the adapter. So that will be set up. If you click on that one, you'll find that it's already set up for measurements mis mismatch. Meaning if the Hermes adapter, uh, Hermes software uh, detects a mismatch with the Hermes, for example, width and the, um, the current machine setup width, it will prompt. And this is a way of putting data down the serial port to a potentially a conveyor uh, to trigger an automatic changeover. However, if you want to use it for a barcode reader, just remove the subscription and you can use it as a, a way of actually taking the data from the serial port found on the adapter to the Hermes software. So if you're going to use the serial port, then it's it's the actual hardware side of it is set up out, out of the box. If you want to use a USB um, barcode reader like this handheld one, again, make sure it's set up in COM port emulation mode. Plug it in to the USB port. Refresh the page. As you just heard it's now gone beep which means it powered up and after a page refresh you can click add and then you can click with the device and it's normally the the, the 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 name of it is a bit cryptic but it will be ACM zero or something on that lines. It won't be the uh, serial port name of the adapter and it won't be this one here. It'll be something else. So if we just click, click that, because it's a USB barcode reader, the actual board rate um, doesn't really matter because it's running at USB speed. And so if we then save that, we have a new value connected to the handheld USB barcode reader. We can then enable it, making sure the values are correct, which they will be. Um, when the barcode gets read, it creates an event. So this is a read event, and the read event will be known as this. You can change that, um, and the descriptions and the subject. This is where the termination character comes in. So we can read to existing, which basically tries to read all, all the data in, inside the buffer of the serial port or the virtual serial port, or we can do it to the end of the character. This is the more um, safe way of doing it. You can also change timings. Um, so if we do read to, carriage return, um, if there's any if there's any situations where there are other characters uh, like control characters being um, uh, read you can use trim which means it trims all the white space all the space you can't uh, you can't see as a human also all the white space being spaces um, and then you can also add prefixes and suffixes uh, to the value so if you need a cer certain if you need it prefix with a certain code every, each time you can do this here so if we save that 
uh, it's always good idea to deploy. Deploy means it goes into the multi-plug system and then it's visible to all the other extensions. So if we then go status, before we connect, try to connect it to the um, Hermes software, we can make sure that things are being read. So we can change the logging level down to verbose, press save, and as you see, serial port read. So now we know that's working okay. Always good to practice to switch off the logging. Um, because that log gets saved onto disk, so always good that I did to switch it off. So now we know uh, that setup, we know the name, it's the one with the 106 at the end of it, um, and we know the subject, which is revalue. We can check this has been go, uh, this is actually in the multi plug software. We can go to uh, overview, extensions overview, and then we can go down to the, the serial port, serial port event 106 and we can see that's got a subject as read value. So that's coming into the system fine. We're getting the, the, the value from, from the barcode reader. We can now go to the Hermes software. So now we're in the Hermes software. Um, you'll have a def default lane if you're using the examples that are uh, used for out of the box. If you select the lane LAN1, if you go to the scan station, you'll find data sources. But before we go to data sources, there are default values. And these are default values that are often used for the dummy data example. There is another video on that, which is just to get to a point where you're creating dummy data um, and the values are incrementing. And so it's a, good, it's a good starting point to just get data through your line. Um, but these values are also copied over when you create a data source. So if you want to create multiple data sources, you can create uh, change values here, and then they will be copied over rather than having to update them multiple times. So if we go to data sources, we will select the serial port all. We know it's serial port read and the read value. Now, if a device has multiple subjects, we will be able to um, select multiple subjects at this point. So, um, a barcode reader only has a barcode, but if you are reading in from another system, it might have multiple uh, values. Maybe even a file would have multiple columns, which would then link to multiple subjects. So we select that, press a, a click, apply, click apply, and then save. And then we have our first data source, which is the barcode reader. As we see, the subscription there with the single uh, value, subject value is zero. We haven't deployed yet, so let's deploy. And then if we refresh that, we will find the event is now connected. We now have data validation options. So in this situation, maybe we want to do uh, no scan, for example, so that the board will fail on that point. We also have the options to check for duplicates. So if we have a top barcode that's duplicate, it will fail. This final point, I personally wouldn't recommend, but this is just, it will automatically delete the data if it, if it sees it. I wouldn't recommend it because I f believe it will be more handy for the um, operator to understand when a, a barcode has been failed. That said, um, if it's a handheld barcode reader, then the operator would know it's already failed. So it's depending on the situation. So there's an operation uh, option to delete the board data. If the board data is not um, deleted instantly, it will still be in the uh, scan station queue but it will be highlighted as uh, failed validation and so the machine will stop alarm will be applied and the operator will have to manually delete that board and potentially remove the remove the, the board from the, the actual real world machine 
So that's the validation. Now populating the actual Hermes data, you've got two options. You can use static values or potentially static values that increment, for example, GUIDs or simply numbers that incre increment, or, um, or values attached to uh, equipment, the current equipment values, which are also static. So here we got, so we got one index, because this, this barcode reader has one index, zero, we have the option to apply that value to any of these value, uh, values of the Hermes data. So in this situation, we want it for top barcode. Um, all the other values can be set as static values. Here, or they are linked to equipment or work order values, which are set up in another area. They're, they're global values, they're the, the values of the machine that you're attached to. These will be made settable from the operator interface. There is a known um, issue to improve that functionality, but at the moment you have to go up to the settings menu. But again, if you had a device that had multiple subjects, you would be able to select more than zero on this list here. So we've got our barcode. We didn't save that. We've got a barcode. Let's save that. And we've set it up as use subscription indexes. So that's st essentially static values. The other alternative is to use the query work order info using the supervisory channel. And again, we can, we can say we want to use the barcode value and we want to enable that. And that will go up to the supervisory channel. The supervisory channel will reply with all the details that needs to uh, be a, um, added to that board. And, uh, and then it will continue. And if it doesn't get a reply, it will be in a failed value state. But let's do static values for now. So we're using top barcode as the, the, the scan. So now if we go over to the operator interface, if we go to scan station, and if we scan the barcode, we will see it has populated in the list. And we can see validation is good. Uh, and the top barcode is that, what we just scanned. Now, if we do that again, we can see that validation is bad because we've set up the duplicate check. And therefore, once the machine gets that value, it will stop and raise a warning to the operator. And we can delete those as we see fit. Um, the other state is, um, is it in, in between state. So it's not good, not bad, but it's not being replied to by the um, supervisory system if you've got that enabled. Supervisory system is has to obviously have a connection that's been set up and all the messages that are being sent by the supervisory system will be collected here. So this queue should really always be uh, blank, no queue, because it, ideally the supervisory system has already replied to those messages. So, so that's the uh, setup of the barcode readers. Um, and clearly, if you want to set up the, if you want to use the work order, if you want to use the, the work order lookup from the supervisory system, you would also have to set up the supervisory system, which is a global, global setting within the software. So it's shared within, by any lanes um, that, that is set up in your Hermes your software. And, and the Hermes communication is pretty much identical to that of setting up the upline and downline um, sockets connections previously. So I hope that helps and um, there will be uh, a similar video 
on how to inject data using a file and then the concept is just the same for other, other um, connections to systems um, and uh, where you push data in, in, into the, the system to load up the system for first time use. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.